Sepanjang sejarah umat manusia, pesan-pesan ilahi seringkali diselimuti misteri. Nabi, Mesias, atau dengan nama mana saja Anda memanggil mereka, sering dianiaya dan ditindas, ajaran mereka dikaburkan. Tapi bagaimana kita membedakan yang benar dari yang salah? Untuk lakukan itu, seseorang hanya bisa mengandalkan bimbingan ilahi dan kebenaran menunjukkan diri pada mereka yang sungguh mencari. Para sarjana telah menghitung bahwa Raja Jayabaya telah meramalkan peristiwa dunia hingga tahun 2178. Beliau bahkan memberi nama tiap abad berdasarkan sifat zamannya. Misalnya, abad terakhir yang Prabu Jayabaya titahkan disebut Kala Surasa, zaman kedamaian, dan penanggalan dari antara 2079 sampai 2178. Tapi sebelum itu, mulai dari di akhir abad ke-18, akan ada kala bendu, zaman angkara, di mana perilaku manusia akan sangat tersesat. Orang akan menjadi semakin tertarik pada kepentingan duniawi dan jatuh ke dalam kejahatan dan penderitaan. Dalam bentuk penindasan, para penjual yang menipu, perang dan kejahatan, kemiskinan dan lain-lain. Namun saat melupakan kemuliaan mereka, jiwa-jiwa akan merindukan, akan jalan yang benar. Abad setelah Kala Bendu disebut Kala Suba, zaman bahagia, dan itu akan terjadi dari sekitar 1879 sampai 1978. Ini adalah zaman berisi tentang ramalan yang paling dinanti dari Prabu Jayabaya, kedatangan Ratu Adil. Ratu Adil artinya Sang Raja atau Ratu Perdamaian dan Keadilan. Dia adalah Mesias bangsa Indonesia dan dunia yang sudah lama ditunggu. Benarkah Maha Guru Qinghai adalah Sang Ratu Adil? Guru memang seorang Mesias wanita yang anggun dan tahun lahirnya 1950 berada dalam perkiraan abad Kala Suba. Dan beliau merupakan pembela perdamaian dan keadilan paling berdedikasi untuk semua. Justice for all animals. Animals, they are helpless, and they have been tortured, killed, maimed, mistreated every day in our so-called civilization. This is not civilization. It's barbarous. I'm thinking, because even in human law, we only punish the bad ones, the criminals, the animals. They do nothing. They're no criminals. Why they have been subjected to such kind of, you know, was the nightmare, was an imagination kind of of, of treatment. be fair to the animals how can we as a human strong intelligent have choices torture somebody who is weak and 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 helpless like that and expect mercy huh
Justice for children. God doesn't want any suffering for any beings. Not any blood, any flesh of animals or any other beings. Not even the circumcision. Think about it. What kind of God would like to inflict pain on poor, innocent, helpless babies and children or even male adults? For what? What for? God wants to cause worry and pain for their parents. I'm sorry if I have offended you in any way, but my heart, is, I feel like it's boiling. With, I, I, I feel, I feel, I feel like something boiling. Thinking of these babies and imagine how they have to feel so helplessly delivered. <laughs> Just babies, a few days old, oh my God. Please stop it. <laughs> Otherwise, God will punish you more. <laughs> In Africa, the woman organ has to be mutilated, otherwise she's not a good girl and cannot marry. Really, when I read all that, I just could not bear. Not just torture animals, torture each other for no reason. And what for the girl have to be married off anyway? Huh? Can she not just live alone and be free? <laughs> yeah. And even blaming the girl, if not married, then she's not a good girl. For what? <laughs> It's a proof of nothing, you married or not. pains my heart also to know, to see all this human trafficking going on in the world and not much done about it. Can you imagine how many innocent, poor, helpless children have been kidnapped and forced into this kind of despicable uh, work just for some rich, uh, privileged few? How many parents have agonized over the loss of their children and don't know what happened to them. So think about it, children helplessly delivered into this brutal beast of so-called beast. I cannot bear it. Teach our children the best way to live their lives, not making a bad example, poisoning them, making them sick, and then worry sick about their illness. Save their lives. 
Give them proper food, nutrition, not poison. Give them live food, not dead cubs, not dead carcass. do arroz. If the planet will not be gone, it will be like a burning inferno. And I don't think any good parents would like to imagine their children or their grandchildren be burned in such an inferno like that. So if they love their children, grandchildren, great, 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 great grandchildren, they have to act now, they have to be vegan now. Justice for victims of climate change and its root cause meat consumption. How many more people have to die? How many more islands, nations have to sink for that piece of meat that we put in our mouth? How many millions more climate refugees we want to look at for that piece of meat that we put in our mouth? How many more families do we want to break up due to this kind of disease and death caused by meat? How many billion more animals we want to see cram, suffer, agonizing in those cram, small crate factories for that little piece of meat that we put in our mouth that we could change? How much more grains, food, do we want to waste to raise animals at the cost of starvation of millions of other people? We have one billion people already. Go back to hunger. Every five seconds, a child dies from hunger. How long we can afford to bargain in the face of this suffering of our own kind and of the animals of the environment? Justice for war victims, including soldiers and refugees. These soldiers, they are the most brilliant generation of our time. 
They're not born to die. I don't care die a hero or die a what. It's the same. It's a waste of resource. They are able-bodied, they're intelligent, they're strong, they're handsome. And it costs millions of dollars here to raise him. And so much love from the family and friends so that he grow up like that. But he's supposed to go out there and shoot somebody he don't even have any enmity with. The children are in the prime of their life and they are also very idealistic. So this good and pure energy and enthusiasm has to be used for peaceful purpose, for building the world, for helping the needy, yeah? That is the kind of heroism that the young people love to spend their energy on. They would love it. To send uh, troops to a far country is, is really a very bad idea because uh, the soldiers are very uh, vulnerable to a new environment. How frustrating and how discouraging for the soldiers to continue like that, and even years and years and years on end, to be far away from your friends, your family, your wife, your children, and then go there just every day, just concentrate on killing people and also fearing to be killed. This is psychologically uh, very, very disturbing. It's not a, a human way to behave. We are not born to kill. Many veterans became even homeless. It's not yeah. fair that they sacrifice their youth, their prime time for the country, and then come home, become a homeless beggar.
before we make war, we should think, how would you feel if you were there in the war zone? If any time, any time at all, in 24 hours, you live in fear and anxiety and panic that any bomb could drop into your house anytime and kill everything, your family, everybody, or maim them, or disable you and your family member, huh? And suffering so much. And in some zone, they don't even have doctors nearby, you see? They have to yes. travel many days or many hours at least to go to the doctor. And they might not even survive. And meanwhile, they suffer so much. I ask people who try to make war or compete with each other in war, please imagine if it's you. to you, but my hearts are always with the refugees. I know how they feel every day. When they were on the sea, man, many lives were killed by the pirates and so much danger on the little boats with not enough food, not enough oil, not enough everything. They all know this and they still fled. It must be something more frightening than death that dri driven them out of their country. Especially since for 5,000 years of our national history, nobody has ever done that. I would not mind to walk all over the world and, and, and pleading all the governments for their sake.
Supreme Master Ching Hai also met with many other dignitaries on behalf of the refugees, but regretfully we cannot show images of these meetings as they are no longer traceable, or because she sometimes went alone or with only one or two persons and without any photography equipment at the time. Etc. Supreme Master Ching Hai is deeply grateful to the beloved God for all the financial help, comfort, and support to the afflicted and needy, and or any good cause over the years, as a humble vessel for His compassion and love toward His precious children. Justice for minorities and the marginalized. This is a trap, this is a tricks of the bad ones, you know, who try to get power over people. Not only they try to divide us from God, make God a fearsome person or beings as revengeful and a punishing God, but they even divide us people as a whole, as a human race. Yeah, try to tell the white people that blacks are bad and try to tell the dark people that the light-skinned people are evil. When I look at you, I think of chocolate <laughs> and, you know, all colors are beautiful. There's no difference, just different flowers. So uh, when people fell in love, it doesn't matter if you fell in love with a woman or you fell in love with, with a man or if, you, if you, a woman fell in love with a woman or a man fell in love with a man, it's all the same. I don't know why any people would forbid people to love each other or to express that love in a committed manner. Love is love. I do not despise people who take drugs, take alcohol, or use in various, however, so-called lowly, uh, cheap substitute to gain happiness, to forget the sorrow of life. I just think they use the wrong way, that's all. And it's a pity. If they know the other way, they would be the fastest for enlightenment. I feel these people are also very near the renunciation uh, stage, you know, near monkhood, <laughs> because they reject this kind of material, transitory, ephemeral life. It's not good enough for them. That means they are very noble, just they don't know how to achieve the real happiness. One time I recited a poem about, about um, an escort girl, you know, in Vietnam, who was in love with uh, her customer, and the customer couldn't care less. But one of your brothers tell me, Master, why you recite the prostitute poem? <laughs> I say, prostitutes also have Buddha nature inside, no? Hmm? And then he was certainly enlightened. And I was also enlightened as I said that. Yes, I really meant it. I really felt it that time. So don't try to look down upon them. Feel sorry for them instead. Yeah? If you can help them out of their... Uh, not very pleasant or very honorable life, then you don't criticize. Uh, there were some girls, three, three, four girls, sitting in front of that nightclub door, you know. 
And you know, the way they wear, you know, <laughs> you know who they are. And there's a mama son also sat together with them. So I I asked her for the robe. And I also waved to the girls and said, ah, <laughs> see you later. And they also smile very big. And then I say, I'm going to eat some Indian food now. Would you like some? And the mama said, no, 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 no. You don't bother. You don't have to bother. I said, no, I like to. I like to give to the girls. All the girls said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking maybe Hong Kong people don't like Indian food too much. Maybe it's too sharp for them, you know? And uh, when they're doing this business, if they have <laughs> some problem with the stomach, no good. So I uh, passed by the Thai shop. I bought some spring rolls, a vegan, and I gave it to them. But I was too tired already. So I sent your brother, the brother that accompanied me. I said, you bring it to them and say, with love for me. And when they saw your brother come back, they knew he was with me. And they jumped and happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> with the bag, they knew what it is. You don't have to buy things and give it to them like me, like that. But be friendly and loving to all, okay? I know who they are, okay? I know what they do. But I respect and love them just the same as I respect and love you. I have not a nano-millimeter difference between you and them. Until this world turns to a paradise and peaceful everywhere, our job's not done, okay? Until the animals are free from suffering and respected as individual beings from God, our job is not done. There are people who are still oppressed because they are poor, because they are black, because they are a different color, or because they're disabled, or, or because they're gay, or because they're lesbian, or because they're bisexual until they are free, until all of them are equally treated with respect and love. Our job is not done. The refugees, the orphans, the elderly, nobody takes care, the victims of disasters, of war, of oppression, yes? Controlled, no freedom. For them, you have to meditate also. Hmm? Wake up, look around, people still suffer. Animals still suffer, and the world is not equal, is not right. So don't think your job is done, eh? Okay? Terima kasih pemirsa Budiman telah bersama kami hari ini. 